Yeah, it's really interesting to talk to hospice nurses. Um, you know, I'm a nurse, so yeah. I I know a lot of different nurses right. in different areas of specialty, right. and um, and the process of dying. Right, there's actually stages of dying, and patients have the same type of symptoms during those stages. So um, it's like kind of an intuitive thing for nurses. They can identify, okay, this patient's one to two weeks away from dying because they're experiencing these types of of symptoms. Right. right. But um, being in the hospital and working in the hospital and being around patients that have passed away, yeah. um, it's like the air is sucked out of the room. Like you can literally feel the spirit leave the body. Yeah. Um, Did and, you experience that? When oh, you were yeah. Oh, yeah. Like running codes on patients in the hospital. Uh -huh. um, whenever you have somebody that's kind of in and out, um, you can feel it like doing compressions, chest compressions on a patient that's um, uh -huh. that's in, in their process of dying, right? Um, and I don't know if it's the spirit that's already outside of the body trying to get back in or, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know what mm -hmm. the, uh, what the feeling is cause I haven't died yet. So yeah. I don't know. I'll get back to you on that one. Yeah. But, um, but it's really, uh, it's really interesting because whenever they actually do finally die, I don't need, uh, I don't need a monitor and a heart rhythm to tell me that they're dead. Like right. you can feel it. You right. can feel the spirit leave the body. Right. It's like all of the air being sucked out of the room at one time. And it's the stillness and like the silence. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. It's like Bernie man. Like, how do you explain it? Like, yeah, I don't know. I know. When somebody dies, it's like, it's yeah. just this, this feeling. Yeah. I know get. what you mean. Like, so I had a, a patient a while back and she was, uh, she has, a, she had dementia mm -hmm. and they had, um, just some, some red reservations about having me as her volunteer because, a lot of people had difficulty with her because she did speak, but I found her so intriguing. The reason why is because she, when she spoke, she did co speak coherent English, mm -hmm. but she wouldn't directly tell you, you know, that she was either happy to see you or that she was uncomfortable or that mm -hmm. she needed this or that. After sitting with her for quite some time, I started noticing that she sort of speaks in a, this type of expressive language where if she's happy, she'll tell me a happy story. Mm -hmm. If she's upset, she'll tell me a story of when she was upset. Yeah. If she needs something, she'll tell me a story of when she needed something. Oh. And that's how she communicated. Yeah. And for whatever very reason, <laughs> yeah, very cryptic, but the nurses and the doctors never picked up on that. Yeah. Even when the nurse brought me to the room, she's like, yeah, she talks, but I don't really ever know what she's saying. Yeah. So I was like determined, just, I was determined to kind of meet that and try and figure out what it was. So yeah. sitting with her enough times, and I used to come and read her affirmations and play music for her and things like that. Um, I started picking up on that. Yeah. And that's very, very beautiful. But the one thing that I noticed about her is that during certain moments, I always catch her looking at certain areas of the room. Mm -hmm. You know, you yeah. know, somehow you have those moments when you're at home or you, you see your cat staring intently at a certain space when you know there's nothing there yeah and cats are another thing like they see into these other sort of alternate dimensions right. and she would speak to whoever was in this room yeah and whoever was standing in the proximity of where she was looking mm -hmm. all the time yeah you know and i see it almost as this after after a while you become this sort of swinging door between this yeah. reality and eternity yeah. And there's a certain point where the lines become very blurred and they have trouble identifying the difference. Right. So I imagine what they see in comparison to what we see, you know, it's like this gradual process of them seeming to us to be crazy, yeah. but for them to be probably more sane than us oh, because for sure. they're opening the doorway into this place. Yeah. That's part of it. That's um, like the last one to two weeks before a person dies, they start having those and I guess medical term hallucinations, yeah. um, but they're not really a hallucination, right? If it's real to them, yeah. you know, is it really a hallucination it, or are they just seeing something that we can't see that right. we're not privileged to see into that realm? Yeah. So yeah, like that, that's super common right around like last two weeks, mm -hmm. they'll start to quote unquote hallucinate, see maybe past loved ones, or um, they'll start talking to something that's not there. Yeah. Um, they'll, uh, they won't eat as much, yeah. uh, be a little bit more tired. And then sometimes you'll see like a second wind, like one or two days before they die where they're right. like no longer in pain and they're um, up and talking and they appear to be like doing 
much better and recovering and like this person's not going to die. Right. Um, and then they pass away the next day. Yeah. So um, the second wind phenomenon is pretty cool too. That's